someday we'll find it. The podcast connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. La da da dee da da da. Da 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 dee. Mana mana. Yeah, that was perfect. Mana mana. Mana mana. Da 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 da. Mana mana. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, Jared, you here? You yeah, with us? I'm, I'm, with, I'm fully on board Wonderful. with this. Uh, welcome to Small Town Film Ghosts, the podcast where we talk about the films at Tin Pan Theater and playing through Ben Film. See, I thought when we named this podcast, our episodes were going to be about us talking about the different ghosts that we've run into in this theater. <laughs> I'm extremely disappointed. I don't watch movies. I've never seen a movie in my life. Okay. So I don't know why I'm here. I'm here to talk about ghosts. Right. Everything that Jared Rasek has written for the source over the last 10, 15 years is, is, a, is a ghost writer. Yeah, I, oh, oh, you are the ghost. God. You're the ghost. That was so you good. Jared ghost. is the small town film ghost. Yeah. I am the small town film ghost right here on uh, your stereo. I think we should change that. But anyway, we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah, we're right. So. Yeah, so we're, we're recording at, at a Tim Pan Theater like we do every other week or every time we record an episode. Um, and later in the show, we're going to actually finally do a deep dive, and Jared's going to finally tell a lot of the juicy details of his experience being a part of the last, last blockbuster. Yeah, super. Which we, have, we have teased many a times, but we're finally going to have an actual conversation about it. Super juice. That's We're excited. Yeah, um, I'm excited yeah. right now it. we are we are closing out some some films pretty soon. Um, yeah. Some we we we've been surprised. Yeah. So we're about in our fifth or sixth week of being back open and, and, and showing movies. Uh, we were really happy to still continue inside during that brief week that we had. Yeah. Uh, where where Deschutes County entered extreme risk. Um, we went down to six people inside, but now we're back up to a whopping nine. Woohoo! Yep. Big numbers, big numbers. Yeah. And we're happy the metrics have changed uh, quite a bit because of the vaccination levels and lower numbers in the hospital. So we're we're excited. We may get into low risk soon or moderate, so that will give us 50%. And at some point, we will be fully back open. Um, and we are so excited about this because this is where the three of us like to be. Yeah, um, yeah. agree. It, it's it's funny how many days sometimes I just come down here and I think I just want to do some stuff at Tin Pan because it actually is fun to work here at this theater. Well, yeah, miss, it really is. I miss um, our community. I feel like I haven't seen um, a lot of people. I miss people coming into the theater. I miss um, you know giving someone a beer and a popcorn and sitting down and having the, having the experience together for the first time. Um, watching mm-hmm. a film, or even the second or third time, and then just talking to those people um, after. It's a different experience in the alley um, because I feel like that's more of like an event, like a concert, you know, kind of or whatever. It's just a different feeling. Don't get me wrong, it is great. And the drive in is certainly magical too, um, but there's something about a movie theater. I also cannot wait to get back into Regal uh, Theaters, mm-hmm. um, which has just said, you know what? F it, we're staying open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think I'm gonna go I, see a movie on Thursday. Great. Yeah. I, I, please, I, I'm please plotting. tell us how it is. Um, uh, but yeah, can't wait for that. So we've got some things coming up. We do, um, we do. Uh, yeah, this Friday we are gonna open up a documentary called Street Gang: How We Got to Sesame Street. Uh, it is not a documentary about street violence. It's actually literally about the origins of Sesame Street. Yeah. Uh, but also Elmo has like those uh like he carries a chain in it and anytime you don't spell anything right well he fucking nails you also there, there is a grouch really who, who, who lives in a trash can so that's yeah. pretty that's pretty high that's Dark pretty stuff. streaky yeah that's pretty yeah, streaky always like oscar the grouch but this is there's been several documentaries about sesame street yeah um, yeah being elmo unfortunately being one of those and there was some unfortunate things around that one but uh uh, this is gearing up. Uh, there's also a film coming up in January of 2022 called Sesame Street, just straight out Sesame Street, and okay. it is a film. So I think this is going to be a lead-in. Exactly. Kind of um, how uh, was it, two years ago there were there was the 
Mr. Rogers documentary yep. and then the actual yep. uh, right. dramatization okay. yep. with Tom Hanks. In so it. the yep. Sesame Street movie is going to have like famous actors and be like a recreation. It is a full on movie. Okay, yeah. you have five seconds to answer this question. Who, what famous actor would you have play Jim Henson? Go, Zach Galifianakis. Ooh, that was a good. That was a good answer. No, what's the Irish actor that was in Babe? Oh, uh, oh James uh, Cromwell? Uh, Cromwell. Cromwell. Ooh, that's yeah. A, that's Cromwell. yeah. I mean, it could be Zach yeah. Galifianakis yeah. as, as young, and then James Cromwell, Cromwell. as old. Yeah. Oh, Cromwell I like. And, he, Cromwell looks like Jim Henson. I was gonna say Sam Rockwell as young Jim Henson, and then. Um, but I know who should play Frank Oz. There's literally only one please, actor please. in the world that can play Frank Oz. David Cross. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yes. nailed that yes. so Absolutely. hard. Did you yeah. feel how hard yeah. I nailed that? Yeah, yeah, like it, it like yeah. blew your hair back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, um, hey, Sam, is my voice good? I feel like I'm quieter than the other two. Just real quick. Does it sound good? Sam, okay. the cool. engineer. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick behind the scenes moment for all, all our listeners. <laughs> Hey, Sam, uh, do you think I should put pants back on, or are we good here? Okay, thanks. Uh, I love audio, <laughs> audio-only mediums. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, we're, that we're was, opening that up. Was, that was Julie throwing up in her mouth because the pants just stayed on. <laughs> so yeah, Street Gang, the Sesame Street documentary, is going to open up this Friday. Uh, we're going to have showings of it every day the, for, for the coming week. Yeah. Um, this is probably, the, the coming week is also going to be the last chance to see the father and Billy, mm-hmm. most likely. So. Most likely, unless you know. Yeah, we we just... we've had people have have still kept showing up, so we we've been holding on to these a little bit longer than normal. Yep. Um, I think that I think Billy is going to play this Sunday, yeah. and then Father's going to play on Wednesday. Okay. It's been um, fascinating because like Billy, when we first opened it, was was literally empty empty mm-hmm. auditoriums showing the movie, and then one day it was like oh. Now, now it's full. Now it's full. And then it kind of has Do you stayed. think it has anything to do with the Hulu film? I mean, with like it, oh, it being on Hulu? Well, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think to some extent um with it being on Hulu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think so. I actually had people say, "Oh, is it the one on Hulu?" Uh-huh. Like, I was them right. about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I think there's also I've noticed a bit of our regular audience or 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 something or these folks that remind me of our Traditional audience have been showing up to the Billy documentary, um, and so I think there might be a, a good amount of people who are just happy to come and support. Sure, us and I, you know, I know that we are booking films that are not on Hulu and right. Amazon, right? Yeah, yeah, wink, yeah, wink. yeah. No, j- kidding aside, I mean, so we're not competing, but I mean, yeah, it, um, it's a, well, it's a, it's interesting because I mean, ultimately, like, we could have had nobody come at all, absolutely. but they're still. Yep. Even though they could literally just sit in their living room and watch it on Hulu, they're like, no. And it even blows my mind when we couldn't serve food or beer. It's like, you're still here oh, to yeah, watch a movie yeah, that yeah. you could watch at home. Yeah. And you have less ability to drink and eat here. Right. They're like, I'll just have water. So that just, I mean, yeah. we have a very loyal, very, we, we very really do. customer. I mean, I, customer and I, th- I think there are a lot of people who just desperately miss the actual experience yeah, of being, around, yeah, and being yeah. around people. Yep. Do you know what I'm going to go see on Friday at, uh, at the uh, Regal? At the Regal? What? what? Uh, a little movie I like to call Tokyo Drift. Oh. Is playing no, on, man. on Friday. Oh I might have to join you if possible. Um, you know, because I live life a quarter mile at a time. Do you know that Tokyo Drift was supposed to be a straight to DVD release originally? Was it? And really? then, yeah, like last minute they decided to release it theatrically. So the guy who directed Tokyo Drift. Yeah, it's Justin Lin. Yeah, okay. Justin Lin. Yeah. Directed three, four, yeah. five, yes, and six. Did. Yeah, and then he's coming and back he for left. the last one. Yeah. No, he's coming back for number nine. Yeah, because nobody is... else wants to do it. I'm I, sorry. Yeah, because nobody likes crying themselves to sleep on pillows uh, full of money. Yeah, I guess. Uh, no, they're like Justin. I, I, I okay. honestly think because like like with those with seven and eight in particular. Yeah, yes, we're gonna talk about Fast and Furious for a second. With seven, eight, and God. eight in particular. We had uh we had these directors who came on that brought like energy and like it, but it still was missing like a piece of the magic. What the like Justin Lin like, factor? Like, yeah, like James Wan the is magic demonstrably the a, magic of douchebags driving in cars. But okay, they, they were only douchebags driving in cars for like the first three or four sure. movies, yeah. and then they became like 
douchebag. They're all less douchebaggy than James Bond. All Every right, single fine. character in those movies is fine. less douchey than well, James let's, Bond. Well, let's 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 agree that that audience is not coming to the Tin Pan. I and don't know that that's th- true. Th- I, I think there's a small overlap. Okay. Yeah, there's a small very overlap. small overlap. I, like I maybe will make less you than five percent. Fucking diagram about it. Here, I, 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 I will say this is a conversation I'd very much like to have. I just don't think <laughs> this podcast is the exact spot. I for mean, it. when oh, is there is. a better spot? Yeah. When is there a better time? Well, what we're here to do today is we are here to tell you what films are coming up, and you should go see Fast and the Furious in Regal because Regal is the experience that you want to see a movie like that. Mm-hmm. And the Tin Pan is where you want to see these type of films, like Sesame Street and The totally. Father. And we, uh, and we still have uh, The Truffle Hunters. Truffle playing. Hunters. Um, you're always going to get a really good documentary out of us. Yeah, for sure. Um, you're going to get these independent films. You're going to get Oscar winners. You're going to get, you know, everything. So I would say um, every town needs a good art house cinema, and we're, we're happy to be that. We are happy to be that, and I'm happy to just fill 28 seats if I can someday. Yeah, yeah uh, that would be nice. Yeah. The yeah. other thing I do want to mention, we are also still doing our outdoor movies in the alleyway. Uh, we, we've been having some really good attendance. Every now and then there's a night where, where we don't get too much, but um, I think if you've heard about this and you haven't come down to one yet, uh, these are the experiences that – if you want, if you're looking for a, a really goofy time out, out outside, watching something on the screen, you know, drinking some beers, um, this this is that that kind of experience. Thursday nights are we're showing the the old classic run of Godzilla movies from the '60s, the original Japanese films, and then on Tuesday nights we're doing uh, B horror films from the '60s, uh, and 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 we can we can serve our full full arsenal of beer, popcorn, and candy. Yes, um, come and eat it and yeah. drink it. Yep. Uh, Damn that. Can we? Can that? Because Tin Pan really doesn't have a slogan. We don't have like a Tin Pan Theater movies. Gotta love them or whatever. So I think you just nailed <laughs> what our slogan should be. Tin Pan, come and eat it. Well, come and eat you it. know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that be it? We've got the popcorn. We've got the candy. We've got you know. So, but hopefully, you know, in the future, we'd like to maybe. Get a, have a full bar, you know. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we're we're moving on up, but in the meantime, please, please come see us, and we will continue, um, you know, to show quality films um, that you might be able to see at home, yeah, yeah. but you shouldn't. You should. You you should, should it's all, it's all about the experience. You hey, should come here. Yes. Uh, hey, 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 Todd. Hey, hey, Julie. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? You know what? I'm really proud about about Tim Pan. What's that? So when I worked here way back in the day. People loved our popcorn so much that they would literally just come in and buy a bag of popcorn and leave. Yep. Like they would, yep. they want our popcorn. I've had that a few times. Yeah. yeah. So we now have a different popcorn machine, a new one. This is true. So the thirty-year-old machine that we had, that people were like, "Your thirty-year-old machine makes these ba- these batches of popcorn so magical." That I've, now we're still getting people that are like, "This is the best damn popcorn I've and ever had." And it's weird. So here's my theory. Is that it has nothing to do with the machine whatsoever. It has to do with us and how amazing yeah. we are. Yeah, and the way we do it is kind of secret too. Yeah, you know, we we, we, we fill, do. We, we won't give away too much. But, yeah, you know, it's proprietary. Filling up, filling up half the bag and putting some pop, some butter in there, yeah, you know, yeah, and then filling yeah. it up a little bit more. So, you know, yeah. it's yeah, an be, added be, bonus. People always say like they they they, they request, you know, can you put the pop, the butter in the middle? And I say, sir. That's what we That's do every it's, time. It's, it's already That's done, do sir. Yeah. <laughs> how dare you? It's like it's like the, and the, and at when the people are like yet. no butter because they're vegan, you yeah. know, I'm like see you in a few minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when their friend gets the bag with butter and they don't, and then they like they try their friends like oh my god. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm I am always you. almost yeah. I'd say like 50 percent oh, of the people that back. don't get butter come back oh, and they're they like okay, I'll get some butter. Well, I, I always try to, like, make it extra dry for them, so they definitely come back. Yeah, That's put some nutritional yeast on it next time. Yeah, year. yeah. I, I mean, I, I have come around to the nutritional yeast. Oh, I put God. It on the time now. Okay. It's All like, right. With butter? It's, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. butter. It sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah, it just yeah. Has, has to stick to it the popcorn with the yeah, butter. Yeah, it's real good. It's the only way it works. I think, yeah, well, I think our proprietary popping process, ooh, 
That was oh. real good. Yeah, Thanks, that's, Jared. That's, um, I think our proprietary puffing process is so good that that is what keeps people coming back for our yeah. popcorn. It has nothing to do with the machine. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, what I'm calling it. So, yeah, the last thing we should say is um, we will keep you updated on everything that's coming to the theater, yep. to the alley, to the drive-in, to, you know, everything we're offering. We'll talk about it. We'll review it. We will give you the lowdown on it, um, and uh, we hope you come and see us in yeah. every capacity this summer, um, because everybody has is ready to get back to what we did right, two years right, ago. Right. If you've seen the the latest Les Schwab Amphitheater um, promo, it was done so well this year that I almost cried. Mm. Um, it had clips from concerts. It had mm. clips from Brewfest. Um, it did. It had some drone footage of just people together gathering. The sound was amazing. Whoever did it, um, and that is what Bend is all about. Um, yeah. About yeah. gathering. Our summers are so short here. Yeah, they really are. Um, so it is is time to get back to normal. And part of summers are going to the movies. Yeah. Definitely. We yeah. hope to see you soon. I'll if you if you go on the website and you don't see you know times or anything of things coming up in the future. I highly recommend that you come into Tidpan and ask for Todd specifically and get in his face and say, what are you playing? Oh, yeah. I, I, will email me. I will excitedly you are, yeah. and will absolutely <laughs> tell you. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, we're going to be right back and we're, we're going to really dig into Jared and, and, and really get the juicy details. Wait, wait, wait. That's, you guys told me I was here to talk about Tokyo Drift. Oh, this is some okay. bullshit. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's how we got you, Jared. That's yeah. how we got you. All right, we'll be right back. I thought we were family. <laughs> Podcast. Podcast. That's beautiful. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, the second half of today's episode of Small Town Film Ghosts. I thought you were going for like a little Batman thing there, I know, but then Batman I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like an cool. old school Batman because you know. I, I did a little about bit. Jared Leto. Yeah. yeah. Jared's favorite. <laughs> but we're we're actually going to be talking about a different Jared. Uh-huh. Oh, better Jared. So the dude from Subway. Let's <laughs> yeah. talk about his so, issues. Let's finally unpack that. Yeah. One. Remember that <laughs> Remember that time he shook Batman's hand in the comics? That, that was, was real. Awkward. Oh boy. Everyone, we are so excited to have the Jared Rasek oh on our God. show today. Uh, yeah, so it's, excited. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank okay. You. Thank you guys for having me. I, I, I know you. it was it was a long journey for you. We, yeah. we we had to work some schedules out. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Um I've become what's known as a fashion icon recently. <laughs> so I've heard. So, I'm uh, I'm doing a lot of um, strip mall appearances, okay. so I just yeah I just canceled one of them. Wait, where where are these strip malls that are still in existence that you are going to? Um, they're no, they're not. Like they're Paradise, just California yeah, they're, and they're not something. still in existence. They're empty. That was strip a low blow. Uh, I'm uh, standing in front of empty <laughs> strip malls. <laughs> being like, no, well, anybody want to talk to me? I didn't mean it because of that. I meant it because you know. Um, I get it. Welcome, Jared, hey, to thanks. our show. We, today, time. we are going to talk about the last blockbuster. Wonderful. And, you know, whether this is your last or first of last interviews about it, we don't care because we are going to keep talking about it. Um, yeah. I recently had to go to the Papa Murphy's um, on Revere because the other one wanted to make me wait an hour mm-hmm. for one pizza. And I was like, uh-uh. So I went over there. And right next door is the last blockbuster true, yeah. on Earth. And mm-hmm. about 30 people were outside taking pictures. So um, it's, it's been that way pretty constantly yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah, for years. Yep, yep. So we are going to unpack it one more time. Yeah. Um, and we've got some questions. Love it, yeah. I mean, I, to me, I feel like the, the first place I want to start is honestly what – yeah, I, I finally want to know – how it even started that, like you knew that there was even going to be a documentary made about our blockbuster, and like yeah, how did he, how did it even start for you, Jared? Well, so uh, the weird thing is that, so when I moved here, all of the blockbusters were Pacific Videos, 
and there was one near my house, and then there was one on the east side, one on the south side. One like they were all over the place, and then all the Pacific videos became blockbusters literally overnight. And then um, as the years progressed, they started realizing the only one that's still here is the one a block and a half from my house, mm-hmm. it, it, which was kind of funny because in a way it was kind of the lowest rent of the blockbusters that were here. The like the one on the east game. side was like this huge yes. video store yes. with five times the movies. You know, w- w- was that even like the, the first Pacific Video location too? I think it was. I yeah, really do sense. think it was. Yeah. So um, I, the source, asked me to write an article about. Oh my God! Okay, this is now officially the last blockbuster. Like, so basically, once, once the Alaska ones are closed. Yeah, like so. Once the Alaska ones closed, the, my boss at the source was like, "Let's have this in the next issue where you talk about it being the last blockbuster." And so I wrote this article about like, here's my day to day going to rent a movie, which I still go to rent movies there as opposed to just going there yep. to take photos. And so, uh, oh, you mean you you actually support them as a business? And yeah, yeah, totally. And I actually, amazingly enough, and I don't use it, and it's kind of a little bit of a waste of money, but I'm still glad I have it. Is I pay thirty bucks a month to always have three movies out at a time. Love it. So I can go in, get three, three, bring them back. You literally just go. I have the three and three out, and you hand them to them and switch. Like you don't okay. give them your card, anything. Okay. So I'm like for the convenience of like. I don't need to watch this movie this month. Like, it's good. To ha- anyway, I go there and I rent movies. So uh, the article came out, and about a week later, the uh, these filmmakers uh, wrote to me. I believe it was – they approached me on Facebook, and they were like, hey, we're making a documentary about the last blockbuster. Can we interview you? And so I met them at Drake Park. We'd never met before. And sat down by the stage in the grass at Drake Park, and they just asked me questions. And then about like a month later, one of the filmmakers, Zeke, was like, you know, your interview was great. We really liked your energy and you kind of made this great. Do you want to do a podcast with me? And so then I made friends with Zeke and we started doing – Got it. Recording a podcast in the last blockbuster. Um, For me, the thing that made it weird was like after – I I wasn't the first person they interviewed, but I was up there Mm -hmm. as one of the first – but they, I don't think, had any celebrities before they interviewed me. Right. I mean, were they still like, even just figuring out what form this documentary was going yeah. to take at that point? Yeah, they had no distributor. They, this was literally just, we are self-financing. Uh, this is the right time to make this. Yeah. So um, when I saw that they actually had a dozen or more celebrities that they set up interviews with, I, I assumed, okay, now I get edited out of this movie completely but then they doubled down and said hey now we have a budget and now we have nicer cameras let we want to film you a second time and so that's why i have like a costume change in the movie okay. mm-hmm. so they interviewed me twice and all right well that's yeah. great um it was amazing and there's there's certainly been many changes over the, the time you know yeah, and yeah. uh and it's great seeing the cast, if, if you will, like after all of this, oh, yeah. really well put together. I loved, um, of course, three fourths is just interview, 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 right, you know, right, right. and it's great. And you're in there a ton, you know, and of course, you probably would have loved to meet Kevin Smith. Yeah, it would have been, <laughs> been, been cool. You know, um, I thought that was great. And of course, the star of the the whole thing, Sandy Harding, she is amazing. Yeah. We love her. Yeah, and she's really amazing. Um, she is a celebrity herself. I talked to her two days ago, and she's just like, I need to talk to you like 10 minutes, you know? Yep. And I'm like, I need 10 minutes of your time. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, tell us about where the filmmakers thought this was going to, where this was going, and then how it ended up, and how, yeah. like, where, well, you know. It they... wasn't It wasn't the last blockbuster when they started filming the documentary. Yeah. I think there was like five or six left. And so. It was going to be, I think the idea was that it was going to be more of like, it was always going to be about Sandy. It was always going to be like, this is a woman running one, one of, of the, the last yeah. blockbusters. Okay. And so it's just, they were, they kind of, as, as luck would have it. Yeah. They, the, the luck of that is insane because like Sandy, I believe was approached by dozens and dozens of filmmakers after Zeke and, and Taylor they yeah. were already making the movie and Sandy because she's like the most loyal 
awesome human being was like, nope, sorry, I'm already we are I'm, we I'm gave committed. These guys, yeah, yeah. yeah, these guys have the permission to shoot in here. They're making the movie. Sorry, and so yeah, the 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 timing just kind of kind of worked yeah, out pretty perfectly. Because uh, otherwise, like all the other media was always just like either news stories or you know websites doing just right. a, a quick you know. Uh, article or something ab- about Sandy. It's like that was the only other filming ever that, that really happened or, or any other form of interviews that ever happened. Yeah, was. yeah. And, and it was like he, there were already little interviews, but it was like as soon as they became the last one, that's mm-hmm. when Sandy became like a legit celebrity. Yeah, and she you know? was, I mean, she was getting interview after interview after yeah. interview. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, the show, her show was here. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, um, uh, NBC Lester Holt has right. interviewed her. Mm. Um, yeah, she is a busy, busy woman. And right. um, because, um, can you tell us about the Comcast connection? Like, do you know? I I just know that Comcast owns the name. Owns the name. And too. every okay. every two years, I think Sandy has to like sit down, have a phone call with them, and try to get them to, you know, renew the name. And I I I guarantee you, now they're gonna keep renewing it because it's like for comcast it's like any yeah any anything keeping the word blockbuster going in people's brains is good for them like yeah. there's no yeah, negative for yeah. them in any way just so our audience knows too locally because we have the inside scoop um they actually make more on merchandise <laughs> yeah than they do on movies um on dvds and game rentals um they they keep that store stocked no matter what they always have yeah. new new releases yeah. um as you can see in the in the documentary um but their merchandising is out of control and, yep. same, yeah. and is keeping them afloat um what my favorite part was um sandy she gets "Quote unquote gifts every week." People, yeah, yeah, people send her DVDs out the uh-huh. wazoo. Um, she gets gift cards, blockbuster mm-hmm. gift cards wow. in the mail okay. quite often. That's pretty cool. Um, and memorabilia. Yeah. And what's special, little special about our blockbuster here is we've got a little memorabilia section. You yeah. Know, right at yeah. the back. Um, Russell so. Crowe's jockstrap and all. Yep. Yep. And, and the 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 little memorabilia section is like incredibly surreal for me because. It has a framed copy of the article that I wrote yeah. that got me in that Zeke and, and yeah. Taylor saw that put me in the yeah. movie. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, yeah, it's like four levels of of meta for me because yeah. I'm like walking around the store and I'm like, well, that's me hanging on yeah. the wall next to Russell Crowe's jockstrap. Yeah. And every I don't know. It's, so you you you've done theater like you yeah, have yeah. you have acted. A lot. Probably about, yeah, have, 25, 25, 30 shows. Yeah, you, yeah. You've done some acting, yeah. and now you've done this, like, documentary. Yeah. And so is – when you're sitting down for an interview for a documentary and you're yeah. on camera and you know this is going somewhere, is it the same feeling – as acting or is it more comfortable for you is it more natural is it like you know yeah. i mean how is how is that different because you've done so much acting and the it's that's interesting because like uh i spent so many years doing theater and did like there was a period of my life where i was doing two or three plays like a, a season um that like in my brain i can always felt like Oh, I'm not like who is Jared because I'm always playing somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like they're like w- like what what am I like as a normal as just a person? Um, so for me, like it was only when I kind of stopped doing theater and kind of got out of it a little bit that I was like I should probably get to know myself a little bit. Yeah. And so for me, uh, doing the documentary was terrifying because I was like. Not only do I, because you know there is a part in the back of your head where you're like, I have to be interesting, or they're not gonna. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I can, I can fuck this up. Like I, if I'm not interesting, if I'm not funny to listen to, I'm not gonna be in the movie. And so a part of me was like, you gotta be interesting, man. And so that's like, like you see me, like I'm very high energy because in my brain I was like, high energy, like be funny, be charming, do do these things. But at the same time, there was a huge part of me at the same time going like what like i'm not interesting enough to be you know like literally the only reason that i was being interviewed was because i was the only 
at that point, I was the only professional film critic in Bend, Oregon. Right. You know, so uh, yeah, your, your your knowledge is why they asked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I mean, and, which is kind of a cliche, but also true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's it's literally like I I will never forget. Like, I'm really hoping like the people that like picked on me in school are like flipping through and they watch the movie and they're like, oh, that son of a bitch that we made fun of for watching too many movies literally got to be in a movie because he watches too many movies. Right. It was like, <laughs> I, th I think that is all of our collective dreams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. well, I learned it from you, dad. Like it was one of those moments where it was like, oh, yeah. this literally my life choices are paying off right well, now. Well, I can what? absolutely tell you that when I started reading your reviews, I was like, I'm gonna take his job someday <laughs> yeah totally and uh <laughs> yeah i'm and, sure that you're still alive yeah and yeah. that's why i you know brought you in because is that why my brakes never work that, you know because okay. i'm slowly going to poison you sometime. yeah no. but i was like you have the luck you tipping. have the best job in the world yeah it's the, and yeah, really you know you really really do i mean yeah. like um you know thinking back like i totally i i know what path i would have taken now uh -huh. Um, had, had I had the time, like being in film school, I'm glad what I did. I really, right, I really right. am because I got to do some fun things, but I would have done it completely different and I yeah. would have been a film critic and a curator. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. so like, um, you know, there's obviously still time to kill you and take your job, sure, but yeah, now there's a film critic at the Ben Bulletin too, which yep. I'm yep. pissed off about. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, kidding. She's great. She's um, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. She is really nice. But, um, anyway, this film, so I remember talking to Sandy, and um, the guys had just submitted to Sundance. Right. And I think they, in the back of their minds, they thought, you know, may, well, maybe, you know, you yeah, know. But yeah. they did get a letter from Sundance saying that this was just not, it wasn't the type of, of film that they, you know, totally. they take, whatever. Yeah, they, yeah. They went on to, you know, send this out to tons of festivals. And yeah, it was yeah. a great little festival film. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think by doing, by making that choice, that's, they got so the orchard which is like a pretty great distributor yep. uh they won an oscar for cartel land and um That's right a few like they're for their documentaries and so by them getting picked up by orchard which i think they're called 1021 or uh, 1091. 1091. 1091. 1091 1091 um mm -hmm. that is kind of what changed the game cuz like once once they got picked up by them that got them more money which got them more you know yeah. interview clout mm -hmm. and what, what was your timeline in between? Like you did two or three different interviews. For I them. did two. Okay. I did, yeah, I did one at my, I did no, I did three. So, so I did the one in the park, yep. and then the second time was them actually filming me walking from my house to Blackbuster, That's right. That's which right. is in yeah. the movie. It's, it's you and Sandy on camera together. Yeah, yeah. And then the third time is the stuff that's me in front of a television with yep. like there's there's a chunk with me outside and a chunk with me inside and. Those yeah, those are the two. Yeah. So I would say it was like maybe six months in between the f first stuff I shot, and then they shot yeah. all those people in L.A. and then they came back and, and, they and get, filmed yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So like in that time period between when when they were done um, having you on camera and like and 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 and, and, and yeah yeah you you being interviewed with them between that time and then when eventually like the movie gets picked up and eventually you know gets screened out outside last summer right. like were you like constantly aware of every step that movie was going through not at all okay there was especially we hadn't really become close friends until six six eight months after they filmed me and then it was like oh we actually all get along really well and we're kind of friends now Got it. like we it just kind of was like oh we've been talking every day i guess we're friends and then zeke and i started doing the podcast together and i i was like kind of fan of his because uh he worked on shows like whatever happened to robot jones and like uh powerpuff girls and a bunch of those cartoons that i grew up with and so it was like i got to ask him questions about you know um gandy Tar tarkovsky oh, and cool. like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. so it, it was like i got to nerd with him did you ever have like a moment where you realized oh this this documentary is about to like go and be a big thing the the thing that's to me still really surreal about everything is the first time I did something outdoors with human beings post pandemic was the drive in theater premiere of mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah, let's talk and about so, that. Yeah, so it was like not only am I around people for the first time in six months, 
I'm watching this movie that I have not seen any of. Right. Yeah. And then and then it was really surreal sitting there watching and being like, holy shit, I'm in this movie a lot. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I figured I w- if I was still in it, I was going to be in it for 30 seconds. And um, if that was the first time you watched it all the way through. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I'd only I'd seen watched. I'd only seen like. I'd one or two scenes yeah. from it. And then yeah. you had to host a Q&A afterwards. Yeah, and then I had to host a My Q&A gosh. Yeah, that goodness. Well, and I will say, when I saw it... I, did you I even was... sleep that night? Uh, did you? Were you nervous? I was, yeah, I was, yeah I, nervous. Was, I, I was really nervous because, like, I... The, Zeke and Taylor are both very, very, very dry in their humor. And so sometimes you're like, I have no idea if you're screwing with me or not. Right, so, right. So Zeke kept being like, Jared, I just I want you to know that you're the romantic lead of this movie. And I'm like, okay, so now I don't even think I'm in it. Like, I think you're screwing with me about it. And uh, and and then sure enough, I watched it. And I guess I guess aside from Sandy, I'm probably in it like the second most of it. Yeah. 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 So. Um, and they did. They're also really good at their Q&A, too, by the way. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, yeah they're, they're, they're they're awesome. They're pros. Um, yeah. They're, they're pros. pros. At that. Um, but yeah, like I. <laughs> I saw it. I thought it was really magical night. Um, just it being a bend and like, um, you know, the, yeah. the movie itself and it was loud and all the equipment was working. Every, well. Yeah. Everything <laughs> the worked. Weather was, yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. worked. The, the weather was great. Um, and the car next to me, um, every time you went on the screen, I won't mention who it is, but, uh, would clap every time and scream that you went up. Uh, yeah. Um, we won't go pretty, there, yeah. but, uh, I was sitting but, next to you. <laughs> at the drive-in the night that I, because you went the night after I saw it, yeah. or the week week after, it was like a no, yeah, they were, the next night, the next night, yeah, yeah. I in the car I was in, I was next to Eric Close, uh-huh. who I grew up watching on this Steven Spielberg show called Taken, which was like this mm-hmm. really awesome. I can't remember if it was Showtime or Fox, or it was a great alien abduction show like post X Files. And so I look over and I'm like, okay, that's Eric Close, and my mom is in love with him because she is obsessed with the show Nashville and he's like the male lead of, mm-hmm, of Nashville. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like, I was like, mom, mom, I'm sitting next to her close. Mm-hmm. She's like, Jerry, will you touch him for me? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to touch him for you, but I'll go talk to him. And so whenever, and I was like, Hey, I just want to say when I was like 18 or 19 years old, Taken came out or yeah, yeah. Taken. And it was awesome. Like you were my favorite post, uh, Fox Mulder, FBI, alien hunter yeah, ever and, yeah. and he was like let me tell you some stories about that and li- literally i got to lean against his truck and he told me like Nuts. 20 minutes worth of stories about like i got cast in that show and then two days later i was on set with steven spielberg that's the dream because yeah. his daughter on that show was ellie fanning was like oh my god eight year old ellie fanning so it was like just got to hear all these amazing stories kind of like our interview with grant like he has some definitely some stories. nice um, okay yeah some especially and we just I nerd out a little bit with yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but um, but yeah, I didn't have any annoying. So he was supposed to stay. The whole reason I brought that up is he was supposed to stay for the Q and A. But I think I don't. I I he bounced. He like mm, just okay. he dipped. Mm, okay. And and I it made like I think Taylor or maybe I made the joke, but it was like I was upset because the the neck beard sniffing VHS cases is in it more than than he is but i don't think he was i just think he was like i oh i was in that for 30 seconds i don't shouldn't stick around for q a so or, when you got the notice on netflix yeah that what how did how did that hold it that was the that that was the moment like like seeing ever seeing how happy everyone was at the drive-in and seeing the audience reaction i was like oh shit this is a movie people like mm-hmm. um finding out that it was going to netflix was like Oh, this is actually going to change my life a little bit. Like this is, like and and yeah, I was, I was, I was amazed. Like I, still, I'm still, I'm still shocked that it's on there. And you know, I'm still. Was that their plan all along? I, Netflix. I don't. Th- I, don't I, know. I can't imagine. I, don't I can't so. imagine that it was. Okay. Um, I I especially think that they looked at Netflix as a long shot because their movie touches on did Netflix destroy Blockbuster? And that's you know. Why, uh, because yeah. There was a, that subject was huge, mm. and um, that's a big part of it. Netflix came to Blockbuster and yeah, said, yeah. because there was a huge lawsuit, which, right. or, uh, this back and forth thing. Um, and I don't know, did they touch on that in the about basically Netflix started doing the same thing 
Right. You know, right. I'm sorry. Well, Blockbuster, Blockbuster started doing, doing the same Netflix. thing as yeah. Netflix yeah. was doing, and they kind of sued each other. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I don't know if you remember either. I I almost wonder if it's a dream, but I could have sworn like around the same time as Redbox was like brand new. Yeah. There were Blockbuster kiosks that were just like uh, Redboxes. Yes. They were blue. And they had the same touch. I do, I do yeah. remember that. Like, yeah, that was real, basically right? Blockbuster okay. was like, "I'm gonna, we're gonna do what Netflix is doing, and we're gonna yeah. do what Redbox is doing." And they got, they, they got, they it was both. just like lawsuit yeah. after lawsuit yeah. after lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Block, block, Blockbuster was kind of like flailing in the wind at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. we need to figure out something. So let's just do what these other companies are doing. Right, and right, it didn't right. go well. Yeah. I just, I literally yeah. remember maybe it was like three months of blockbuster machines in the stores and then just gone like mm-hmm. yeah I they were never in front of 7-elevens they were always just in the corner like safe of a grocery store. yeah 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah yeah hearing it was going to hearing it was going to netflix was like and was I, i'm insane. sure it was the fact that this all happened during the pandemic year meant yeah. that every time you learned something it was just like you'd wake up one morning and you'd probably just get a message or something saying okay this is what the new update is yeah 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 it's that's exactly what it was but yeah cuz i filmed both my both times they filmed me were before the pandemic yep. so i i think in a way the pandemic like helped the movie or something because what probably would have ended up happening if there wasn't a pandemic is they would have shopped the movie out to festivals yeah. and done the festival circuit for a year. And like and like you you probably would have been in like invited out to like a festival yeah, here and there. That would have been know, super yeah. fun to go to festivals and stuff, but like like I, that was one thing when we were initially filming it. They were like, Hey, I hope, like would you come with us if we went to festivals? Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh my god, that would be like a that would be amazing. Like I've had movies get into Ben film before, but never outside of Ben. You know? Definitely, definitely. Um, so I, I think by them not traveling with this movie, it kind of made them focus on like doing things the safest and most responsible way they could, which ended up getting them on Netflix. Getting them on Netflix, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and like it's been how long since they've like been on Netflix? Maybe like two months yeah, now. Like two, yeah, like two months. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like. I mean, the funny thing, too, is how, again, because of this last year, uh, before it got on Netflix, like, the, the, the amount of people who became aware of, the, of, of, of this movie now, since it's been on Netflix, is just, like, an astounding skyrocketing of people right. being much more aware of this Which movie. I didn't think was possible. Like, yeah. like you, you go into – Sandy and I talked about this, actually, the last time I went into Blockbuster, which was really surreal because people would walk by and see me and Sandy talking to each other in Blockbuster and go – like we watched right. people watch us talking. It was insane. They're, they're like pull, pulling up their, fo- their, yeah, their like, phone real slow. Yeah, like, yeah, can I yeah. take a photo? Can you guys look? Can you guys look at the camera? Um, I said that in jest, but like yeah. also knowing it was real, no, but then to know that it is real, like C- Sandy literally was like, "We have to talk fast because people will see us talking and want to take photos." Yeah. She literally, she wanted, she know, she knows what yeah. what's up now. She can well, she can barely go in there. No, she can't. She can't go in there without. People saying, "Hey, can we get yeah. a photo with you?" Like that's, you know, what's funny yeah. is I'm now realizing that I'm pretty sure I've seen Sandy in person, but because I've seen her so many, so many times in different forms of media on screen, I can't say for sure whether I've actually talked to Sandy in person ever. Yeah, it's it, it, she's the she is that person, so it's almost hard to even like because you watch the movie and you're like, "Oh, I feel like I know her now," so mm-hmm. it's almost hard to remember. Like, do I just know her from the movie or like? Is she – no, she is really just that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I can't imagine because she was already, like, being – going on Ellen and doing all this stuff when they were the last blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, before the movie even, before even was finished. Before the movie yeah. was a thing. And so then overnight that movie hits Netflix and she's, like – like, she hand sews all of their yep, yep, paintings. Yep. And overnight they got 300 orders. And she was like, oh, that's – a year of sewing for me. I like, I'm gonna, this yeah. will take a year. So yeah. she had to literally within, I think 48 hours of the movie going on Netflix, she had to cancel the uh, ability to purchase beanies on the website because she was like, yeah. Oh, that's, I don't know if anybody wants to wait a year. That's and everybody's crazy. like, no, we want to wait a year, Sandy. Right, she's right. like, all right, well, I guess, I guess this is I'm what I'm doing. doing this now. Yeah. I hope she got to catch up on a lot of podcasts and movies and yeah. TV shows that she I, always wanted to get I to. So t- I hope so, too. Yeah. She's the the busiest human. Like, it's insane. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. And, and it's crazy to think, dude, that 
I'm sure she was incredibly bu- busy all of her life leading up to this, and yeah, just just still incredibly busy. Yeah, yeah, and well, and that, and also not letting being kind of freaking famous like ruin her. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah, or she's the yeah, same. Dana, she's like, still a sweet. She handles the. She handles it beautifully. Like there's no aspect of her that is egotistical or precious about it. You mm-hmm. know, it's she just really loves. The fact that her, you know, Mon Pastor is still going, you know, that's really what it comes down to for her. Not, not the interviews or the fame or, or yeah, that. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty good that uh, you're still the same person, Jared. Oh yeah, I, I, I love it. I'm way different about it than Sandy is. I am. I mean, I can tell. You know, you just I'm soaking sometimes it up. you're just you're just you feel like you're too good for us now, Jared. You know. Listen, yeah. What are you gonna do your book signing? Listen, I yeah, told I'm sorry, your VHS signing. I told both of you to not make eye contact with me today, and I'm a little disappointed that well, you are. I didn't. That was in my writer. Huh? You engaged. So. That's true. That's true. I did. Yeah, but but it was. We went on Netflix, and then over. It literally. I mean, it wasn't that big of a thing, but it did literally change my life overnight. The, from, oh, yeah, from in in my conversations I've had with you, yeah, I I, yeah. I can definitely gleam an understanding of how it's a surreal experience. Well, just like I went to bed on a Sunday mm-hmm. with that movie right. not being on Netflix. But you, you you knew it was coming. Right? I knew it was coming yeah. on Monday. Yeah. I knew it was coming on Monday. I went to bed I, on I Sunday. I think like, you knew that Friday. I remember we we were having a conversation about. Yeah, that. I, th- I think I learned. I yeah, I knew a month ahead of time okay, that it was okay. going that it was going to Netflix, and um. So Sunday night I went to bed and I was like, well, tomorrow's going to be weird. And then my mom was like, will you still talk to me, Jaren, <laughs> when your movie comes out? I'm like, yeah, mom, I'll still talk to you. And uh, so I went to bed and then woke up Monday morning and it was like, I looked at my phone and it was like, you have 300 uh, follow requests on Instagram and, you know, Dang. 75 messages. And, and then Facebook was even more. It was like, it was people being like, and then, yeah, and then. I got great messages and I got a couple creepy ones that oh, creeped me out happen. as you that's do. Happen. Yeah, I shut um, my I shut my Facebook down for for a little week. bit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, when you get to that status, you start getting haters. Yeah. And it is that's just. Can yeah. I tell you what the champagne weird, the weird, You want to hear the yeah? yeah. Can I, you want to hear what the weirdest one was? I still can't stop thinking about it. Like it freaks me out. I mean, I, I, th- I think that this will be a, a good cherry on top of the interview. Yeah. So, you know, this, this is how it will go out. This it. So the the fun part is kind of obviously uh, the gay community has has embraced me fully because uh, I I was wearing a shirt with a bear on it and there from Powell's been, books right yeah from Powell's books and um I I'd say like twice a week I get men being like I would make your toes curl you like le- legit I've had that said to me okay. and it's just the most it's like it doesn't get like more rewarding than that kind of. It's like, thank you for thinking I'm handsome. And then there's lots of pretty girls. Most of them are like tattooed, pierced, like like rockabilly pretty pretty go- pretty gothy yeah. rockabilly girls have been into it. Yeah. Um, so our, our, our type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's been great. Uh, and then, um, but then like, I would say about three weeks ago, this guy comes on and he goes, um. Are you a Serb? That's all he says. Like the, his whole message is, "Are you a Serb?" Just question mark. Or no yeah, question. yeah. Are you a Serb? Okay. And I'm like, uh, well, you know, according to my grandfather, you know, I'm, I don't know a lot about it, but according to my grandfather, I'm Yugoslavian. Um, like we, like we come from, like our family comes from Yugoslavia, like three generations back. And he's like, there is no such thing as Yugoslavia. And I'm like. Uh, uh, I mean, I know there's not really now, but are you asking if I'm like Serbian or Croatian? Like what? And he just kept being like, "What was your what was your original last name?" And I'm like, and it just it hit a point where I think he saw he saw my last name in the movie and was like, "That sounds like a Serbian last name." And then when I said I'm Yugoslavian, that really offended him. Like. Curious. And so he's been – anytime I post something on Facebook or – so, like, I was having a sad bastard moment, like, three or four weeks ago, and I wrote on Facebook – or I wrote on Instagram something like, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like a bad person or something. And this guy, who literally our whole encounter has been, are you Serbian? No. Be proud of who you are kind of thing. He, he pops on and he goes, yeah, I agree with that. 
like I agree that you're a bad person, you know, and I'm just like. No, it's, all, it's turning now at this. He's he's. It's kind of like this weird stalking thing. It's a weird like this guy. Yeah. Like like any time I post something to my stories on Instagram, I see that he's it's, looked at it's it. It's time to it, block. It's hey, time yeah. to block. He he sees you as a punching bag. And, and it's time to block. He's, yeah, he's taking out his aggression yeah, on something. It's and weird. Yeah, but it's it's. And I'm sorry, about, Jared. Like, well, and think about how celebrities have to deal with this. Right, and not yeah. that you are yeah, not at that status. I'm just saying, like, what this is every single day yeah, every and single multiple, day. multiple, multiple times yeah. where it's then turning into scariness, where right. they are, you know, threatening their life, um, right, right. breaking into their homes. I mean, right. the you know, it it's you know. Social media and that yeah. whole space and everything that that that's scary. I mean, I'm sure Sandy has gotten some negativity oh, yeah. you oh, know, yeah. towards her and yeah, the, you know, uh, and I I won't give too many details, but she actually the last time I was in there, she told me that uh she got like a c- cable installer came in or or something, and as he was like pulling in, getting ready, he looked and saw that it was her and was like, oh my god, you're the lady from the last blockbuster. And she literally had to say, "Okay, you can't tell anyone that I live here." Like, like, t- t- like Please. she has right. to, yes. right. yeah. she has to have that anonymity, Absolutely. even you know. Please do not yeah, tell anybody yeah. that I live here. Yeah. See, if you the thing that's screwed up for me a little bit, and I maybe should have done this differently, is that if you look me up, the first thing that kind of pops up is the source, and if you go to the source website, it has my personal email address mm, on it. Okay. So that happened a lot. I'm I'm getting two dozen or three dozen I'm sure. requests a week to watch people's movies. Yeah. Like that's been a big well that's almost been the most thing. Wherever anything. you go from here, Jared, you know the we of course want to keep you forever. Yeah. Um like here that. and you know but wherever you go from here we know you're gonna be successful, whether it's on camera or off camera. I or just on paper, or on a computer, or whatever. We know yeah. you're going to be successful. So thank you. Um, I, I like being in Tin Pan. Is kind of my it's my favorite place to be, like on Earth. Well, so. it's also a place to create. So yeah. keep that in mind. It's also you know a, a space to to yeah, I love to it. Create. Anyway. So thank you so much yeah, for definitely. joining our show today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to you know, next week when I, when I can just dunk on you again for just being my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, pr- this, I really appreciate it, guys. Okay, after this, I'm, you know, I'm gonna just rag on you after this. Yeah, so, that's that's know. fair. But, but thank you so much. You're so amazing. Oh my god, that, oh, you know, your, your performance. It's was really been incredible. an honor to be on the show. I, uh, <laughs> uh, you guys are a really great podcast. Okay, well, your limo is here. I think. Oh, great, and, great. Um, yeah. We Hans. Have, we have to. Wrap Hans, this I up. told you to stay in the car. What? Get in the car. It's, I'm sorry. Yeah, you it, just it, can't it, hire them. It, it, you just it, can't hire the right ones right. anymore. Uh, All right. So All right, everybody. Well, uh, thanks for listening to our, our ah! interview with uh, Jared Rasek. Sorry, guys. Obviously, uh, you know, he, he's got a busy schedule these days. Yeah, so, I, you know, I got to go. We can't keep I got it too long. Are, are you seriously? Why, why are you back? All right. This is a uh, small town home? film ghost. My name is Todd Weiser. I'm, I'm Jared Rasek. And we will see you again, talk to you again next time. This Yay. is the podcast we recorded at the Tin Pan Theater from Tin Pan Theater and Ben Film. TinPanTheater.com. Hey. Tim 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 Ben Film Bo- Festival.com. Follow on Instagram. In the alley. In the, in the alley. Film, yeah, Ben Film Festival on Instagram. Yeah. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.